and welcome to race number 11 of the MSA American Ethanol Truck Series. We are here at Mid-Ohio Motorsports, or uh, Sports Car Course, and we are getting ready to go here. First, we're going to start out with what we saw in qualifying. The first car out would have been uh, Zach Fitzgerald. Zachary Fitzgerald in the number 33 truck. He was the first car truck to go out, and this is your first set of qualifying. And uh, Dave Kennedy would have been the, uh, the fastest lap. This is... Uh, Pretty much the end of uh, what his lap would have been. Pretty blazing fast lap, and then Giulio, uh, Gio Barraza, Giovanni Barraza, ended up being the tenth truck in. These are the drivers that did not start: Igor Barreto, Mike Monacy, Jack Porkins, Cesar Chavez, Stuart Gratton, Frodemar Ants, and Alex Cage. And barring that, let's get to the starting lineup with Nick Pericles and Rick Witt starting on the front row. Rick Witt. Uh, the highest starting spot he's been in, and Nick Pericles grabbing his first ever pole. Second row will be Derek Yarworth and the 38 of Tanya Brayer to his outside, and so that's a, uh, a pretty good run for RA Racing so far. Kenny Washington in the 90, and then in row 3 inside, and then Eli Bright running his Casey scheme. We'll talk about that a little bit more in row number 3. Patrick Smith, the highest running qualifier for VCR Mercedes and Antonino Russo in the 26 in the outside of row 4. Row number 5 will continue on with Mally Motorsports. The rest of the field for Mally Motorsports as Ryan Kendall and Arnold von Hindenburg share row number 5 together. Row number 6 will be Alexander Rowe in the number 16 and on his outside will be the number 4 truck of, Z of uh, Russ Kamoski. Hasn't won a race since Texas World. So Daniel Bouchard hasn't won a race since Texas, and Steve Hickman is waiting for his next win. He won last at Michigan last season. Colin Denton moving up through the field now. He's currently eighth in in uh, he's currently in row eight inside. And Zachary Fitzwater, your Iowa Speedway winner, to his outside. Jennifer Power in the number 81 has been dropping in the point standings, but she's been still being consistent. Row nine inside to her outside, Jason Kranz still chasing the 88. Gatlin Downey and Bill Cox will make up row number 10. Gatlin on the inside and on his outside, the veteran driver Bill Cox in the number 22 truck. In row number 11, Tristan Allen in the 98 and his teammate in the 44 of Justin Zidell. Both of them looking for better finishes than what they've recently gotten. Kurt Trencherman in the number 60 is going to start row 12 outside and on his in or on his outside, he's going to start inside. Nathan Hallman in the number 17 will start on the outside. Eric Monaco in the number 36 truck and Derek Hamill in the number 87. Both will start on the inside and outside of row 13. Row number 14 will in will have Ace Garcia in the in the 03 and the double three. 33 car of Zachary Fitzgerald in row number 14. Row 15, Jacob Poole in the number 06 is going to start inside of Fernando Olieza in the number 54, making a race after a quite long hiatus. Al Legacy in the number 3 is going to start inside row 16, a terrible qualifying run for him, as well as Isaac Nichols in the number 13 to his outside. Mitchell Henderson as well, it doesn't seem like Revolution Racing is doing very well, as well as the uh, current road course racing winner at Circuit of the Americas, and your final row will be Dave Kennedy in the number 61, and Giovanni Barraza in the number 92 truck. And here we go, Nick Pericles will lead them around this big hairpin turn as they head down towards the front stretch. Nick Pericles leading him down, and green flag is in the air. We are underway here at Mid-Ohio. Pericles getting a decent jump on the number 68 of Rick Witt. And now Rick Witt has to contend with the 80 truck of Derek Yarworth, but also has to deal with the 38 of her of his teammate, Tanya Brayer, breathing down his neck. He was able to clear the 80, though. Now the 80 has to deal with the 38. The 38 nearly getting to the inside of the 68. And things are going to be pretty... Uh, pretty uh, exciting at the very first lap, but I feel like this is going to turn into what we could uh, consider a single file, kind of a follow the leader kind of race. It seems like a lot of the road courses do that, and uh, I don't know what you can attribute that to. As you can see, Tanya Barrett going out a bit wide, looked like she was trying to, to either uh, defend or was being kind of shoved out of the way by Derek Yarworth, but still keeping that third place position as your top five. Currently, Nick Pericles leading Rick Witt in second, Tanya Brayer third, fourth is Derek Yarworth in the number 80, and fifth is the number 53 of Eli Bright, having a good run so far. Road courses definitely are one of the great equalizers in this series, as well as those large two-milers. 
due to the fact that these trucks don't have as much power as what you would say the Casey's Cup cars do, or what even the, uh, the Penzo Pro Series cars do. So they're definitely uh, lacking on power, and it makes those tracks more like draft tracks. And we talked about in the starting lineup how the 53 had a, an exciting thing with the Casey's uh, sponsorship. They've decided to expand pretty much the entire schedule uh, for Eli Bright, and we'll run that Casey scheme for the rest of the year. So a good thing going on for uh, for that 53 team and for Jones Motorsports in general, as uh, they'll definitely uh, be uh, keeping that sponsor going into next season. And again, a lot of a lot of sponsorship uh, can really help a team out, especially a team that's kind of struggling for finishing positions. Uh, one of those teams being Colin Denton's number 19 truck, uh, running that team by himself, and pretty much started at the very bottom of the uh, of the totem pole. And now look where he's at right now. Currently running, I believe, in 16th place in that number 19 Curtis Wright Toyota. But at the same time, you've got to give it to him. He's got some uh, some speed under that truck now, and he's definitely running up with the leaders. I, I wouldn't say completely a, 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 a top-rated truck just yet. He's still got a, f a little ways to go before he can really kind of uh, solidify himself. And I guess you could say he's considered about the same as maybe Norm Mantiel was last year. Uh, in the Casey's Cup Series as Norm Mantiel was uh, your last year's champion and didn't even run with a sponsor. So uh, Colin Denton currently running a pretty decent race so far. However, someone who's not running a decent race that should be running a decent race, Mitchell Henderson in the number 88 truck. And a lot of the uh, the road course drivers you'll, you'll see up at the front, but Mitchell Henderson is a big surprise to see at the back of the field. He's currently in 33rd position. And, or actually, I believe he's in 34th position. Or actually, no, he is in 33rd. Uh, can't figure out which one's 33rd and which is 34th. But Eric Monaco is 34th, Mitchell Henderson 33rd, but still a very abysmal qualifying effort by the by both the 3 and the 88, and that's what mired them back here. However, it could be worse as the 88 is uh, definitely not doing as bad as you may think, considering where the other drivers are at that are running for the points championship, the three is also back in the back of the field, and uh, a lot of the uh, the Dorellis Motorsports trucks are kind of sitting mid-pack, so really the only drivers that he has to worry about are uh, if those guys up at the front of the field are within the top ten, and, the, and I believe Nick Pericles is uh, one of those drivers within the top ten, but I don't know if he's within striking distance of the of the points lead by the 88 so it's definitely going to be an interesting thing to watch as uh, we'll see where everyone kind of stacks up in points however we're going to give a give you guys a little bit of a tour around the racetrack Justin Zidell in number 44 Menards truck currently sitting in 19th I believe and uh, he's going to give you a little bit of a tour going down that long I guess you could say uh, second straightaway into one of the two hairpins on the racetrack, as this racetrack does uh, have two uh, sort of hairpin turns, and that's the fastest uh, turn, I believe. You have to, the the fastest to the slowest uh, corner that you have to go through on this track. And Justin Zidel, uh, I believe he did fairly decent at the last road course. I could be incorrect on that one. But right now, running behind Bill Cox, Bill Cox never really has been a, uh, a road racer, so definitely doing some good in that number 22, although he is still running mid-pack, but a lot of this uh, stems from just the simple fact that uh, not a lot of these guys are road racers. So they really kind of, uh, it, it's kind of the great equalizer when you're going to a track that no one really knows too much about. And as we go down that... I guess you could call this the final stretch into the uh, the last hairpin turn, right behind the number 22 of Bill Cox, and this is kind of what the uh, the series was kind of uh, not wanting to see is uh, that sort of single file, everyone kind of just stays where they're at sort of deal. And that's pretty much what we're getting here, is Rick Witt still sitting behind uh, your leader, Nick Pericles. 
and he, he just has not been able to catch the six. No one's really been able to do anything to the six, and it's it's been a little frustrating for some of these drivers because they really can't do anything when you just can't catch up to the guy in front of you. And, and a lot of this stems from uh, just the similar setup, lack of uh, driver's knowledge of the racetrack in general, and possibly just... Uh, not really knowing where to pass on the track, which is also can come back to the lack of knowledge of the racetrack. And a lot of these drivers are getting a bit frustrated with what's going on, and it can really uh, can really do you in if you don't if you're uh, not uh, up front early and you can't make passes afterwards because now everyone's kind of uh, running behind each other. They don't have much left in their equipment and. The, another thing too, they were also expecting these trucks to make pit stops, but from what I could tell, from what I can tell from just radio chatter, they, everyone can pretty much make it all the way. So it's all about uh, if they can actually make it all the way on uh, on a full fuel fuel load or not, and that's definitely what the uh, what all the drivers and all the crew chiefs are saying that they can make it the rest of the way. Pretty much is uh, solidified right here as Nick Pericles taking the white flag. He's led every single lap so far, and it looks like he's going to be able to lead the last one unless something really bad happens to him, such as he loses it in the corner, maybe spins himself out, or if he just blows an engine, that could be devastating. And that could also really shake up the front end, front of the field. As you can see, Rick Witt. Maybe looking a little bit more aggressive uh, in this last lap. He looks to be a little bit closer to the back of the six truck as they head into the next turn. This really tight 90-degree corner that the, uh, the 68 doesn't seem to be able to get close enough to him. And it just seems like that's been the case the entire time that we've uh, been here racing. And, uh, and it just doesn't seem like anything's really uh, changed so far due to the fact that they just cannot run with each other or they can run with each other but they just can't pass each other and passing is definitely a thing that the road course uh, the road course races really needs to uh, to remedy but Nick Pericles going around that last little hairpin coming down to the front straight away Nick Pericles leading every single lap so far he will come down across the line, and he will win here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. And a great second win, I believe, for Farvham Motorsports. The only driver now that they need to have get a win, uh, before Dave Kennedy at least, would be Alexander Rowe as Nick Pericles taking home that first place trophy. Rick Witt and Tanya Breyer making RA Racing a 2-3 and three finish. Derek Yarworth in fourth, and your top five will be rounded out by Eli Bright. Antonino Russo, Kenny Washington, and Arnold von Hindenburg all having some fairly decent days. Patrick Smith, uh, the, only, the first part-time driver, I believe, uh, up in the top 10 for BCR Mercedes. So they had a little bit of speed here for the road course. Ryan Kendall rounding out your top 10. Russ Kamoski, Alexander Rose, Steve Hickman, Daniel Bouchard, Zachary Fitzwater make up the top 15. Colin Denton. Uh, ended up sitting behind Zachary Fitzwater, Jason Kranz, Bill Cox, Justin Zidell, and Jennifer Power rounding out your top 20. A couple drivers that we can note here. Again, I'm, I hasten to say Patrick Smith, as he had a decent race. He started up towards the front and finished up towards the front. So glad to see that uh, we had a couple of underdogs finish in the front of the field. Derek Hamill, 21st. Gatlin Downey, 22nd. Nathan Hellman, 23rd, and that's and uh, this is what I was talking about when I said a lot of those front runners in point standings were back in the in the back of the field or mid pack. Zachary Fitzgerald, 24th and 25th, rounding out the top 25, is Tristan Allen. Kurt Trencherman, another driver who could be threatening for the championship, in 26th, 27th Fernando Olieza, 28th Kieran Pangborn, 29th Al Legacy, and Isaac Nichols, making up the top 30. 31st, Giovanni Barraza, 32nd, Ace Garcia, and Mitchell Henderson not being able to get out of 33rd place. 34th, Eric Monaco, and 35th, Jacob Poole. And finally, Dave Kennedy for Farfham Motorsports. They had both drivers. They had two drivers on uh, either end of the uh, the field, one at the very back, one at the very front. 
and I guess you could say they had a fairly decent race other than the fact that Kennedy just couldn't qualify with the uh, the rest of the field. However, Mitchell Henderson keeps his points lead, uh, holds it by almost 20 points now over Jason Kranz. Nathan Hellman in third. Fourth is Nick Pericles after that victory, so that will make him uh, come closer to within striking distance as he could get the points lead if he gets another win. Uh, Kenny Washington in the 90 uh, in fifth. Sixth is Al Agassi as he will drop down the field pretty hard. Russ Kamoski in seventh. Eighth is Daniel Bouchard. Ninth is Arnold von Hindenburg, and these are your last two drivers in the top ten without a win. Arnold von Hindenburg and Alexander Rowe. Your second set of your uh, top 20, Bill Cox, ends up moving out of the top ten as he was in there for a pretty decent while. Derek Yarworth in 12th, 13th, Antonino Russo moving himself up in Mali Motors for Mali Motorsports. Kieran Pangborn dropping even further after a bunch of uh, kind of back-end starts for that number 24 team. And Rick Witt with a decent finish gets him up to 15th place points. Ryan Kendall, 16th, 17th, Zachary Fitzwater, 18th, Tristan Allen, 19th, Justin Zidell, and 20th will be the number 53 of Eli Bright. Getting him out of that uh, sort of... Uh, back six feeling there and here's going to be your your last slide of points as we will not show the top 40 uh steve hickman in the 64 will be 21st 22nd jennifer power 23rd is the 60 of kurt trencherman 24th is tanya brayer 25th is eric monaco and 26th being the last truck on the cut line is the number 13 of isaac nichols Colin Denton coming within striking distance of that 26th place in 27th with 148, compared to Isaac Nichols, 174. Ace Garcia falling to 28th to Colin Denton. Gatlin Downey moving himself up right behind Ace Garcia and Fernando Olieza making up the rest of your top 30 in points. That is going to do it for the American Ethanol Truck Series here at Mid-Ohio. We will see you guys next time in race number 12 here for the AETS. and welcome to the Casey's Cup Series here for Mid-Ohio Speedway and we are going to have a, a pretty decent race uh, from what I assume, although if anything from the Truck Series is concerned it may end up just being another uh, single file race, but we're going to jump right into the action here as the number 63 of Dave Witt has gained the pole position on his outside will be the number 42 of Austin Jakes. And this is how they're going to start. And we are green coming down to the front straightaway here at Mid-Ohio Speedway. And it was a lot more even this race. The Truck Series, as we saw, wasn't as even of a, uh, of a start as it was here. And Dave Witt looks like he's actually falling off a little bit. Austin Jakes will clear him coming on to the, uh, the first hairpin turn. And that's obviously not something that the uh, the 63 car wanted to see. Definitely not. As now Austin Jakes currently holds the lead. Annalie Whitmer in second. As Dave Witt continues to fall. Ricky Dixon in the 01. Looking to take the uh, inside away from uh, Dave Witt on this track. On this turn. And maybe Annalie Whitmer. Now we have two cars battling for second place. It's the 01 and the 112 both fighting each other for that second place spot. Maybe to get up to the back of the 42 or for the 01 to possibly defend his position. But meanwhile, the 42 of Austin Jake's pulling away. This is exactly what he wanted to see as the leader is just to watch the entire field just fight each other while he can just pull away from the rest of it. And again, if we haven't seen anything from the truck race, this is definitely going to be a, a, a single-file event. But these drivers are a little bit more aggressive. They may get a little bit up close. A little bit closer to each other than uh, than maybe the truck drivers did, as they didn't get very 
close between each other. Uh, one of the, uh, what in the drivers who we expect at a road track, uh, Norm Mantiel in the number 44, or, or Mantiel, I don't know exactly how he, uh, has said to pronounce it, but the, uh, the GameStop car, definitely this is where he picked up, uh, picked up the pace last season and, uh, rolled over with a, with a, uh, championship and ended up gaining GameStop and uh, A&W as his two sponsors. And definitely something to, uh, to notice, this driver did not have any sponsors last season. Now he does have uh, two sponsors this season, so sponsorship can definitely help. But it can also maybe hurt a little bit, as he just has not had the same speed, as I don't believe, as he did last season. But he seems to be picking it up. He's still running towards the front of the field pretty much every time uh, we pull onto the racetrack. So obviously some things for the 44 that we... Uh, that we may see in the next uh, few races, but right now he hasn't shown uh, the same exact speed. A little bit slower. Uh, one driver who hasn't shown a lot of speed that we would have expected them to see is the number two of Eric Monaco. Uh, Monaco in the number two subway car, although Bonneville Motorsports was not really the greatest uh, as far as speed is concerned last season. They've definitely done a little bit better. I don't, actually I think they've done worse this season as the two car and the three car. The three car, I believe, actually won uh, at Mexico City uh, last season, so it could have been either either or, but this team has definitely lost a lot of speed considering where they were at last season, but they just never really had speed. They were never really consistent, and uh, even with Eric Monaco, a driver whom they expected would uh, help the team out, uh, even then he's just not been able to, uh, to help the team out very much. And it's a darn shame that he's not been able to do the exact same things that he's been doing in the Copyright Amateur Series. And I guess you could say the same story with the Truck Series. Although these are a different group of drivers, different kinds of cars. Although he did run similar uh, body cars uh, last season in the Copperhead Amateur Series for uh, RVR. Or Red Stallion Racing. But just hasn't had the same speed and it may just be the equipment that he's running. As you can see his teammate in the Schneider National Truck in front of him. Arlington Park in the number seven will take us around this track uh, for a single lap here, as uh, he is the oldest driver in the field at 72 years old. This is his retirement season, and uh, this will be the last time we see him at Mid Ohio, and this will be the last season that we will see this driver uh, unsponsored pretty much his entire career. He's basically been traveling around with his own money, although you can you can kind of uh, give a little sympathy to him. He does run. Uh, he does run for companies that uh, will uh, will endorse him. Obviously, he he never really asked. They never really asked to put their name on the cars. But he's also got a, a decent uh, group of people who uh, who enjoy it. Who uh, I guess help him out a lot with uh, his career. And he's definitely had a long career, being 72 years old, starting in the very early years of uh, V8 supercar racing back in Australia, where he's from. And has had a decent uh, seat, has had a decent career. Has fallen off these last couple years, and I believe that's why he's stated that he wants to retire after this season, which is an admirable, uh, it's just an admirable thing for him, as he has had a very long and, and quite successful career. Actually, he was one of the uh, one of the champions of the uh, of the MSCA back when it was still a dirt stock car series and a late model series. So. Something to uh, to take into note of uh, some of the history of the uh, of the uh, the MSCA Casey's Cup Series. I'll, uh, one of the drivers who's making headlines and one of the teams that's making headlines is uh, uh, Farfham Motorsports. Alan Eberhard in the number 16 will make his day will make his return to the Copperhead Amateur Series uh, in uh, and the final race of the season. The uh, the team has said that they don't have the car completely prepared yet. But it's pretty much going to be the exact same car that uh, that he's running now. The number will be 76, which uh, we haven't seen that number in this uh, series. We will see 68, uh, I believe, join this team as the 76 car. But definitely a, uh, a team worth watching in the in the Copperhead Amateur Series, as we've seen, as this is the first time we'll actually be seeing an MSCA team. Uh, move into the Copperhead Amateur Series, although uh, Farfan Motorsports not really performing very well here. Uh, Alan Eberhard has kind of struggled to uh, gain a few uh, 
get some uh, position on the field and just really I don't think he's had the uh, the same strength as we assumed he would have had. Uh, maybe Farfham is just a bit struggling with their uh, program right now and definitely something that needs to be addressed uh, come next season in, if they don't address it in the next few races. And I think that's what they're going to do. Going to see what they can get here and maybe maybe uh, figure out what they can in the Copperhead Amateur Series. And speaking of the 68, this is the last time... Uh, this is the last season that this 68 car will be run. Uh, the team has kind of fallen out of favor uh, with the uh, the series. And they've decided to basically just disband the team, sell the cars off to Farfham Motorsports. Uh, and the 68 of Ernest Crispin has not had the greatest, has not has the greatest career in the Copperhead, in the, uh, I was about to say Copperhead series, the, uh, the Casey series, as he has had just multiple uh, bad finishes, never really uh, has gotten very much. Compared to what he did in the truck series, where he was on one of the best teams uh, with Bill Cox when he when uh, when uh, Rem wasn't a thing, uh, when Bill Cox actually uh, had a team with Greg Shivers, who currently drives the 98 car, and uh, a, a definite disappointment as as uh, that team really is struggling with uh, a driver whom they expected to be uh, uh, someone who they could uh, count on as a as a decent driver. Meanwhile, we're on the final lap here as Austin Jakes crosses the line. And again, this has been pretty much single file since the drop of the green. Although you couldn't say that for the first lap as there is a pretty pretty exciting opening lap with the 112 and the 01 battling it out between each other. But uh, Austin Jakes has been able to uh, take this field and basically... Uh, Put it into the ground as he has just led. As he's also led every single lap, much like Nick Pericles in the Truck Series race, and he is definitely, uh, definitely looking uh, a victory into the face here in that number 42 car. As they're going through the S curves down the back, the uh, the back portion of the racetrack, and they're going to get to the speed section in the uh, the next corner. As Austin Jake's still able to pull out from the 112 of Annalee Whitmer. However, Annalee Whitmer doesn't really matter if she gets a win right now as long as she's beating her competitors, uh, which would be the 01 and the, the 63 of uh, Dave Witt and Ricky Dixon. She's doing all right, although if Austin Jake's does get a little bit better, which he will get a lot of points for this one as he comes across the line, and he will win here at Mid-Ohio. Austin Jake's a great job for that car. Getting the lead early against uh, Dave Witt, who uh, we expect to have a little bit of a better time, but doing his burnouts on the front straightaway. And that will do it here for the MSCA Casey's Cup Series. And uh, a decent race, uh, a decent winner the first time we've seen him in victory lane this season. But we will see you guys next time in the next race for the Casey's Cup Series and the MSCA.